But uh, all right, man. Uh, how's it going, Chad? Life is good. Can't complain, man. Oh no, you can't. I mean, a little, like, little crazy, but yeah, of course, of course. Um, before I even get started, I, I I'm gonna feel so bad. But how do you say your last name? <laughs> Ann Helliger. Ann Helliger. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, like introduce you on here and then like fuck up your name and then it's like oh my god I, man you'd, you'd, you'd like, be one of many there's no, no problem there yeah yeah so um uh before i actually get into all the mma stuff so um i i hear your email address and then the shirt that you're wearing so you're really into fishing as well you kind of have a bit of a side hobby eh yeah yeah i work for um um tracker boat center they're attached to it's attached to bass pro shops so, um, yeah, I work as a manager there and run the service shop. So I'm inside a boat like almost every day at work or when I'm not working, I'm in my own boat. So, yeah, it's like a, a basically my two passions for sure. Doing MMA and then out on the water is, is, is a huge one for me. Even though it's Alberta, we don't have a lot, but I still like to get out there. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, uh I would kind of see it like being out on the boat. Is that kind of like your way to get away from training and, and kind of keep your, your mind off of uh, training and fighting, et cetera. Yeah. They're the complete opposite. That's kind of why I like them. It's like, yeah, you know, train hard and then rest hard, you know, like rest as hard as I can rest by doing, you know, absolutely nothing. Yeah. I know with like a lot, some fun, they, they'll mention like, Oh, fighting's all I know. And, uh, I can't get enough of it, but I find like a bit of that's kind of, I, I don't know if that's entirely true. I mean, I think that in any, uh, w- whatever you're doing at for work, uh, whether it's MMA or you're sitting at a desk or at a job, I think that you got to do something to kind of get it, get your mind off of it. I think a little bit too much can be, uh, can't be healthy. I think. Oh, it's all about balance. You know, you see a lot of guys that come hot and heavy, um, storming out of the gates in their MMA, MMA careers and then they don't last. You know, I've been doing this pro for over 10 years and that's part of the reason why, I mean, it's not a, uh, a sprint. It's a, it's a marathon. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I feel like some people, it's kind of like you buy a house, you know, right away you get excited and you're, you just want to go, 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 but it's like, you kind of have to slow down. You know, you work, you work for your, you work to get to where you need to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then that way, when you do get the things that you want, you'll be ready for them because, you know, you put in the work and, 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 and really have the experience, right? Try and do too, too much, too fast. You're going to burn out or you're going to, you know, just not be ready for it. Well, I mean, you're not, you don't become a champ champ from nothing. So <laughs> true. They don't just hand that out. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah. So let, let's going to get into, into, <clears throat> In here uh career here so uh first off i should have said uh thanks for coming on the on the podcast here i know it's like nine o'clock at night there out in uh alberta there and uh so i know it's getting kind of late so i do appreciate you uh taking the time to do what you had to do i know we had to reschedule so i do appreciate it yeah no problem man it's normal time for me I, it's, this is typically when i get home and finally get some dinner and stuff like that anyway so i have a long day pretty much every day so Okay. Okay. Well, I do, again, I do appreciate it. So, um, I guess, uh, to start off, um, I like to kind of train at uh champion's creed. I mean, you got your, you know, your coach, uh, uh, Brian bird, I think that's how you say his name. So yep. what's it, what is it like to be able to train over there? It's the best man. It really is. I, um, and a lot of people don't know that about my career either. Um, cause my career has been really up and down. I know a lot of people know that, that it didn't start great. And then I, I've been on a big surge lately. A yeah. part of that that people don't know is um, I went two and five as a pro. So I lost three in a row. I was really bummed. And that's when I went to Champions Creek. I switched gyms. I went to Champions Creek. Since I've been there, I've won eight in a row. So I could tell you till I'm blue in the face about how great it is. But, you know, the proof is right there. I mean, I, I literally was having a struggling career, switch gears, new gym. And I was just, it, it's a huge difference. There's such quality people there. Uh, and not just in uh, my training partners, but just in general. And then they understand uh, the balance that I was talking about. I mean, we, we still have to enjoy what we do. Uh, we can't just go in there trying to kill each other every day. Like I used to do and train when I was younger. Now we go in there and we, we work on our skills and, you know, it's a, um, it's a fun place to be. It makes me still go every day after 10 years. So that's kind of, um, that's what keeps me active and, and keeps me winning. Yeah. And I think with a lot of fighters, it, um, some, if something's not working out for you, 
find what's going to work for you. And, and, and I mean, and it's simply, you, sometimes you got to change your camps, you got to change uh, your, your, you know, your gyms, you got to find out what's going to work for you, uh, whether it be training partners uh, and just a coach that, you know, I don't think there's necessarily bad coaches out there. It's just, what's the right coach for you? What is going to work for your skill set, and what works going to help you and that connection and et cetera, et cetera. So I do, I do have to agree with that, which is good. And I'm glad to hear that, that that's kind of worked out for you. And I mean, I mean, you've had some good, some good guys coming out there. I mean, you had, um, I know, uh, Hakeem, uh, I, I think that's who you say, Hakeem, uh, yeah. uh, I know he's fighting out there, which is great. So, uh, yeah, I think you have a really uh, solid gym, uh, training out there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, you're just kind of touching upon uh, the start of your career there. So can you kind of, uh, kind of give me the backstory about how you got into MMA in the first place? Yeah. You know, th- there was no one specific thing or fighter or fight or anything like that. Like a lot of people, uh, you know, my age or have been in the game as long as me, it's similar time with the ultimate fighter show and stuff like that, but it really wasn't anything like that. I just, Mm. wanted to do something i didn't really know what i I played hockey uh as competitive as i could i came from a really small town and it's really all we had and then once you know i was done high school and i was done playing hockey i didn't really have any other options for it i just needed to find something i didn't really know what it was at first i thought maybe it would be boxing or something Uh, again things we didn't have in my hometown so when i first moved to the city i just started trying to go to all these things that we never had before you know and um it was actually uh, an MMA gym and that that's what they did was just MMA and I walked in there one day and I man it just I couldn't believe what was out there you know like I couldn't believe what I was missing these guys were so they just knew so much they were so cool they were also you know so helpful and it was just like uh, I'd never seen anything like it before and I was just obsessed right from there from like day one I literally I literally probably went every day for like three years until I finally took a day off so yeah, shit. I mean, that's commitment right there, one on one. I think uh, that's us typ- typical Canadians. We 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 work hard and. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I just, I mean, I, I it was things I'd never seen before. I, I I did I couldn't believe that there was people that skilled, that dangerous, that were just walking around like regular people. I had no idea. You know, I came from a, a small town where that was. Yeah. That was, you know, I just did had no idea. My my mind it was so open after that first day that I just wanted to learn as much as I could about it. I don't know. I think there's something about guys just wanting to fight. Uh, I mean, my girlfriend teases me about it. She's like, oh, like, what is it about guys and they want to fight? I said, I don't know. It's just, it, <laughs> what is it about you liking watch guys knock each other out? I said, I don't know. It's, I know it's sick. I know it is. <laughs> just some, there's some kind of energy about it. And I mean, not just knocking guys out, not just the stand up, but the grappling. Like, I, there's something, uh, I don't know for myself and not just doing it, but watching it. And there's some beauty about watching guys being able to, um, you know, you watch the contest between guys and, and watching styles clash together. And I just think it's, it's the greatest thing to watch. Well, you know, one of the reasons I think that um, fans love it and that um, people like competing in it is uh, the stakes. The stakes are just so high. That's why fighting is exciting that way. A sport or a game, there's stakes, obviously, but there, there's nothing like putting your consciousness, your health, like everything on the line. Like the, the, it's not even about how exciting it is to knock somebody out or to choke somebody out or to hurt them in that way. What, what's more exciting is like, man, those two guys really risked it all to go in there and see who was better. Because there is no other, there is no bigger risk or gamble you can take than, than your own health putting it out there. So I think that's why people like it. The, the stakes just couldn't be higher. Mistakes get you hurt badly not losing a game, not getting, you know, a point or a scored on. This is, you know, you could be potentially be hurt bad or long-term. So it's, um, yeah, it's the risks, I think, that that drive people to the sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I agree with that. Um, I think that, yeah, and, and you know, and, and that's why I love seeing the respect between fighters for the most part. I mean, it, you know, you see that the fact that, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know you can have the the worst bad blood with anybody, but you know if you have any sense of well, the if you have any sense of the welfare of your uh, of your opponent and knowing that, I mean these these guys like most of these guys have families. You don't want to see this guy have to go home and be messed up. You want to make sure he's healthy going back home and. You know, you know, you're both getting paid, but you want to make sure your opponent's going back home safe and sound. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's that's uh, 
I think that's what anybody really, really would want. Um, but um, I mean, kind of going uh, talking about RFC. So, um, you know, like I think your last fight was in 2019. So, I mean, I know that I know the COVID kind of came in and and put everything on halt. So, what what's going on with the RFC? Um, are are you planning on being able to fight soon, or what what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I'm ready. Um, uh, I know Rise has been uh, working hard. I, I've been talking to Saab, too, I mean, back and forth. And he's still working and trying to find ways to put on events. Uh, it's very difficult for them, obviously, like any of the local shows. Yeah. When you're limited in, in, in selling tickets, there's just so many limitations. But I know he's working on it. He talked about doing a, a live stream only show. He's talked about this and that. I know they're not just sitting on their hands. So they're working. And, I mean, the time he did suck because uh, I – struggled so hard to find an opponent um after my last win um like and i mean we went through like 36 guys all very skilled winning records that all said no and i just couldn't get anybody and then we did get this guy drake bowen out of uh, california and like i was so pumped about it i mean this was such a a, a thing to to finally have finalized because it was about payment and then I had to concede this and that and all kinds of things. They finally get somebody out here. And I, we were done. And it was literally like a week later, the event got shut down. COVID really took over because this was back in like March. So uh, yeah, it was super deflating. It's not like I had a bunch invested in the training camp or anything, or but I it was a lot invested in finding somebody to fight. And then COVID shut it down and we've been shut down since. So I've had, you know, I have a management company, um, Sucker Punch, and they're working for me too. Um, we were supposed to get onto the contender series. Yeah. But it is, it's hard to, to facilitate that right now. I mean, mm. travel is difficult. Opponents are difficult. I mean, I, I, I had it at my fingertips, but I never quite had it. We never had a contract mm -hmm. and um, it slipped by. So that's another one that kind of slipped by too. And now, you know, that series is done all the way till next summer. So I'm in a little bit of a holding pattern. I'm not sure my management's working on another fight for me right now. I can't, um, I'm hoping to still get one in, in, in 2020. So that's kind of all I can say about it, but, I'm hoping I can get something uh, finalized pretty soon here because I have been training and I'm at a point in my career, age, my, my momentum, my, my winning streak, everything. Um, I'm not sitting around. I'm, I'm not waiting. So I want to, I want to get a fight. Well, I mean, with the impressive uh, record that you have now, I mean, you're on a, a fight win streak, you know, you're a double, you know, you got both titles in uh, RFC. I mean, you would think that uh, any uh, bigger organization would look at this would look at this guy and say okay look at this guy's resume he's on an eight fight winning streak he's you know like the last three or four fights he's had he's knocking people out he's got two two belts at different weight classes um you know like what are we doing here like what are we not doing not signing this guy so i mean i think i mean do we uh would you be open to kind of getting a, a short nose fight or something like that in, in a ufc or bellator each yeah yeah i mean that that that's that's another thing we're waiting for you know like there's a lot of guys like me out there that's part of the problem mm -hmm. um, but i mean the the difference is i i will i want the fights i'm out there hungry i'm looking for the fights i'm not waiting for an opportune time. I'll take it at any weight. You know, I, those things don't bother me. They haven't bothered me my whole career. So people talk about, you know, if the UFC called me with a, a short notice opportunity, uh, it's not short notice to me, man. I've been training for over 10 years and fighting for over 10 years to try and get this opportunity. So to call that short notice, it just makes no sense. You know, like uh, this is something I've been waiting for my whole life. And then I'm going to say, Oh, you know, I want an, I want an extra month to get ready. Like, it's just ridiculous to me. I, I'm ready to go. So I, I, I know I'm right there. Uh, I know it's just a combination of a lot of things, timing, COVID didn't help. And it, I'm just, I'm just buying my time. I, I made it this far. Mm -hmm. I didn't come this far to only come this far, you know, I'm still going to get this done. So I just got to uh, wait till everything lines up for me. Yeah, of course. And I think that, uh, and I think that's where a lot of guys um, and, and girls as well uh, in certain organizations, they're not able to fight right now because of the COVID, right? I mean, they're not in the, they might not be in the biggest shows, et cetera, et cetera. There's a list of problems um, why they can't fight. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people are, a lot of fighters are struggling. I mean, they're kind of standing on the sidelines saying, hey, you know, like I'm ready, I'm ready, you know, and uh, and waiting to get that, that, uh, that, that, that short nose fight or that fill in fight in a bigger organization because then i mean bam i i think 
in UFC, if I'm not my if I'm not mistaken, if you do take a short notice fight, they normally give you I think three or four fights uh, on a contract. So I mean, right then and there, I mean you're already you're already guaranteed at least three more fights. So I think right then and there, I mean, that would be a good opportunity for yourself. I mean, I know I understand the contender series, like a lot of guys, I mean, you're, you're no, you're no uh, rookie. I mean, you, you're pretty much a veteran fighter. So do you feel like the contender series is something that you would, you were definitely interested in, or was it just something that to get your foot in the door? Yeah. I mean, it, it was going to be there. So I, you know, I, I was happy to take it, you know, a big fight, big stage. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Right. It doesn't have necessarily have to be, you know, a certain organization it doesn't have to be this or that. I'm looking for the right challenges and the right stage to perform on. So whoever can bring that to me, I mean, I, I'm super happy with it. And yeah, you know, um, I, a lot of those fighters are more up and coming fighters. You know, you see some of these guys five and zero, four and zero, stuff like that, getting fights on it. So I get what they're doing with it. But you know, what better test for some of those guys than to go against a veteran and see you know, um, who's going to come out on top, right? The, the guy who's, who's hot out of the gate or somebody who's been around for a long time, you know, it's kind of a fun matchup sometimes too. So I think the, they, they, they do a little bit of both sometimes to see where you're at and, and a way to test some of their younger guys too. So wherever I fit in, man, I'll, I'll show them where I do belong. So if they want to put me on contender, I'll show them real quick that it should be the UFC. So <laughs> there you go. And, and I guess, um, you know, you, you fight, you fought at uh flyweight and, uh, in bet and, uh, Bantamweight. So, um, when you went up to Bantamweight, I know it's some guys talk about, they, they, they cut a certain weight for so long and then they go up to uh, uh, the next weight class or et cetera, et cetera. And they actually have a hard time maintaining, maintaining that weight. Have you ever had that issue? No, I, I'm, uh, I'm really good at that. Actually. I, I've changed my body a fair amount for different fights. I fought in, in my pro career in five different weight classes. Really? So I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been in all kinds of different weight classes and uh, they just, it just doesn't matter to me. A lot of the guys are, are so worried about how much they're cutting, what their opponent's cutting. Like, mm-hmm. man, if you're in a pro fight with somebody and you think five pounds or 10 pounds is the difference between you winning a fight or losing a fight, like there's a lot more to fighting than, than just being heavier than somebody. If anything, that is literally the lowest, the lowest thing that could matter in a fight. And for some, a lot of these guys, it's the highest thing on their list. I, I just don't get it. Uh, if I know I'm going to be fighting at a higher weight class, I just eat more. If I know I'm going to be fighting a lower, I just eat less. If I got to cut a lot of weight to make it, I can do it. I got the mental fortitude for it. If I have to cut no weight and he's going to be bigger, I can do that too. So, and I, and, and exactly like, I don't think that um, weight really does make a difference. Like, of course, yeah, you're not going to be fighting a, a guy fighting at your weight class. You're not going to fight a 250 pound guy. That's just not realistic. But I mean, y- yeah, exactly. Like, no fighter should really be afraid to be fighting a guy that has a little bit more weight on him because at the end of the day it does not matter i mean it just yeah. it really does not matter i mean anything can change a, a moment in a fight and i mean a really good example i i think um i, I mean talking about female fighters here i mean valentina shevchenko she's fighting this weekend um and i've seen it where she's like some of these girls are much bigger than her or have more of a weight advantage over her and she's you know, she's still whooping these girls out. I mean, she's dominating, dominating, mm-hmm. these and dominating these girls that are much bigger than her. And that just goes to show you that, like, it, yeah, size does not matter. Or weight does just does not matter. Um, yeah, you know, the the only thing that's ever been uh, that I've noticed in, in in all my fights and all the weight classes I've fought in is the frame of the guy. So, you know, I've fought guys that are like six feet tall. Yeah. that are you know really long and big for the weight class and that has just difficulties sometimes to deal with but uh, especially if it's similar framed people and somebody just has a little bit more muscle than the other person that just you know that that ranks so low on on uh on value on winning a fight you know fighting skill you know uh, experience all these other things have uh, have way more to do with winning a fight than uh, than the weight but frames have been a bit of an issue like i fought some really tall guys that give me a little bit of difficulty sometimes, but same thing. I can find a way to figure it out and, and, and get it taken care of. Talk about like, it's, what's probably been the most difficult fight win or lose that you've been in. Mm, that's a good question. Um, 
you know, I've lost fights earlier in my career, in my career, but they were definitely not my most difficult. I, you know, I was winning them, but I was just young and made stupid mistakes and right. ended up losing. And uh, those are my most frustrating for sure, because I know I can get all those back, but you know, it's part of the learning process, but my, honestly, my last fight with Brady um, Heinstead, that was a switch out. It was supposed to be Jamie Siraj. Uh, Jamie was injured, couldn't fight. So this other, they brought this other guy in. He was already training for another fight. And he came in. I didn't know a lot about him because his record was kind of funny. Like he was four and zero as a pro, but he'd won like nine in a row uh, going back in his amateur. But everybody he fought had like crazy bad records, like zero and seven and blah blah blah. <laughs> so I figured that you know he just wasn't going to be that good. You know, in re reality. And I took the fight, and man, that kid came to fight. He was good. He was skilled. He was strong. He was big. Gave me a lot of problems, but, you know, eventually, and that's the benefit of a five round fight too. experience is really going to show. So eventually he wore down and I was able to take him out, but he, he definitely posed some threats. He, he was big and strong and uh, I had to be, uh, I had to be tight that night for sure. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. And I think experience does kind of uh, difference, um, you know, and, and I mean, but at the same time, I mean, you get some young kids that come in and they get lucky and uh, you know, they, they come in they, and they catch you, but uh, it's good that, you, that, you know, you still put them away and uh, on to the next one, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny, you get older and time is not really on your side, but in a fight, time is on your side. So yeah. if I can get through, if I get past the first round with somebody, no matter how, you know, gung-ho they are, I know I'm going to get them out of there, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know that you kind of mentioned that, you know, you're still, you know, you're with, uh, you said Sucker Punch, uh um management so um so there's no nothing upcoming news there's anything that uh that they've that they're looking into or is there like they're, they're trying they're working on trying to get me a fight um there's some events still happening in the u.s so okay. they're trying to get me on uh, on one of those cards i don't, I don't have anything done yet but uh, basically my my message to them always has been you just find me the person and i'll be there i'll be on wait and i'll win so they're just out there trying to do that for me. And, and it's difficult. I mean, with limited fights and it was already difficult before, before COVID hit, like I said, 36 guys, that's all North America. I mean, we're trying to fly anybody out that would take the fight. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's been, it's just been extra difficult now. And then, you know, uh, but they'll, they'll get it done. That's what they do. Then they, they represent a lot of high level guys in the UFC and, and all other and Bellator and a bunch of other organizations. So I definitely trust in them. Mm -hmm. And they just keep telling me, keep training, be ready because, you know, all of a sudden one phone call is going to happen one night and, you know, we're ready to go. So You're done. I'm just getting ready. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kind of taking you away from uh, so much more of your career here and now more in like, uh, you know, just social life. You know, you talk about, you know, you work for uh, Bass Pro. Um, so how do you how do you balance like your you know, your training, work, social life? How, how do you manage that? Well, poorly some days, but some days I do all right. I, I'm pretty busy is, is typically the answer. Cool. I'm really lucky. My, my job is uh, very supportive of what I do. They know how important it is to me. They give me a lot of leeway to, to do what I got to do for training and for leaving and taking times off for fights and stuff like that. So I've got tons of support that way. Um, and, you know, yeah, it, it, it can be hard. I, sometimes I'm jealous of the guys who can just train and just fight. They don't have to worry about a day job. Same thing when I'm at my job, you know, those guys don't have to also leave and then go train for five, six hours, you know, and then, you know, I, I don't get to see my girlfriend till nine, 10 o'clock at night. And then, you know, I'm eating dinner that late and she's getting into bed and it, it can be difficult for sure, but I still have my eye on the prize. So it's, it's, it's what really is driving me to, to still get this done. And I'm lucky a lot of people out there just aren't able to do that much stuff. So the fact that I'm able to, work you know have my relationships train I, I teach at our gym too the, the fact that i I'm, I'm lucky enough to be physically mentally able to do that it's not a bad thing so i i, I never think of it as negative i'm not, i'm just lucky i've been able to do that and and burn the candle at both ends for for so long and i'm gonna keep doing it as long as i can well you know it's crazy and it, it's um you know i think you know you're not the only one i mean i've had that, um, a couple other guests on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, uh, a couple of these girls are actually, uh, they do like, they're actually in the women's NHL and they talk about how difficult it is for these women to have to work like two, you know, like two jobs, right. They have their job mm -hmm. 
and they they have their hockey and they say like it's yeah it's difficult that you have to and some of them are moms too um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean at least for say when it comes to men and mma you know at least yeah you have yourself family but you're not you're not taking that year or two off to have kids and then have to like, mm-hmm. rehabilitate right um so i i, I you know when you brought that up, that is exactly where my mind went to. I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's tough. Um, it's certainly ain't cheap to live in this world these days. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, so just, uh, a couple of ones uh, before I let you go here. So um, I don't know how much you pay attention to current uh, UFC cards, um, but I, I guess I'll ask you, um, you know, so in one of your weight classes, you got that flyweight. Uh, actually, they're both flyweight. Um, you got fair. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Perez, have you been keeping eyes on that? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the division's been pretty hot lately. It's been fun to watch, actually. Uh, a lot of those guys are really, uh, really skilled. Even with uh, Cody Garbrandt wanting to come down to 125, too, really <laughs> gives us kind of that that top that top five bunch of guys that are actually really skilled, really dangerous. Flyweight's always kind of been a little thin at the top, but uh, there's a lot of skill there now. I, uh, I think um, Figueroa is just deadly right now he's just dialed in he's got huge power huge confidence behind it um Perez is like young hungry skilled but I think again a little bit more experience and uh the power in the hands and that's going to be hard to get by I mean stopping um um Benavidez twice I mean yeah that doesn't just happen by accident that guy is is world class so he's probably I think he's going to leave with the belt still but I uh I'd love to get in there and 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 start mixing it up with those flyweeds in in the UFC for sure. Yeah, so if they said uh if they called you and Perez was out, you'd be like, "Hey, sure, I'll fly me over there. I'll, I'll fight the guy." <laughs> I I I'd do it for free too. Damn. It, do you kind of like look at it like what if they were do you look at it as more I mean, you want to get paid? But is it more just a pleasure being able to fight with a high le- high level or high class level guy? Just being to having the experience to share the cage with them is there a bit of that weird feeling? Yeah, yeah. You know, as my career has gone on, it's it's had a lot of different driving points to it. So at first, you know, I just wanted to test myself, and then I wanted to you know see how good I could be and fight the good guys. Then you know I wanted to win a championship, and then I wanted to really push myself against the the best guys and the biggest stage available. But, you know, really, as I get towards the end of the career, it's more about the experiences. I just want to get as much experience out of this as I can uh, while I still can. And that's just travel, fight these cool fights against, you know, international opponents. You know, I just want to get the the full circle of, of my career. I really feel like that's the final phase for me is just the real fun experience. Get to, you know, my friends and family, they can, you know, fly to Vegas or fly to you know, cool places to watch me fight. Like something like Fight Island, the guys that got to go out there and do that, they, they'll they look back on their careers and be really, really uh, thankful that they took those fights because at the end of it, when you're down, when it's all over, you're an old man and you're, you're talking about your life and your stories, you're going to want to make sure you have a, a lot to say. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the, the cherry on the, on, the, on the cake. I think that, uh, I think, you know, as much as, I think every, every fighter wants to get paid, but just the, the, to look back and know, you know, there's no, there's no regrets. I think, you know, you, you, you fought whoever you could and, and to be able to have that. Yeah. To be able to say, look back in your life, say, wow, I got to fight that guy. And, and it was great experience. And I think the experience part is more important. At the end it really the is. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. I mean, I, I don't want to miss out on any, as long as I'm physically able, I want to just say yes and, fly around and fight everybody and just you know get as much of it in as i can because there's going to be a point when you can't and then you're really going to really wish that you you, you'd said yes more often so yeah absolutely chad um chad i just wanted to thank you for coming on the podcast i know it's getting late at where you need to be i know you probably want to eat you know have your own time so i do want again i want to thank you for coming on the podcast it's been nothing but a pleasure having you on Hopefully you'll get that good news coming soon and uh, you get a fight in 2020 or in 2020 or 2021, man. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. It's fun to be on.